I would be here if her son was not my son-in-law. She is Marjorie Margolis. Her son happens to be married to Chelsea Clinton. Chelsea is now expecting a baby. Uh, Mark and I are very excited. And her mom may be running for president. Your son has married into a political dynasty. What's that like? It, it's, it, it's surprisingly normal. That depends on how you define normal, because the backstory of the two families is anything but. I'm not coming here saying vote for her because 20 years ago she saved the economy. She also saved Clinton's presidency. It was 1993. Clinton's defining economic plan was on the House floor and about to die. The Republicans were high-fiving, saying it's going down. She was a holdout, a Philadelphia freshman who had won by just over a thousand votes. A lot of Democrats were talking about changing their vote. That's when the president called. And I said, and I will only be your last vote. I know how important this is. He hung up and then watched her from the White House. And so we all gather around this little one foot, you know, 13 inch screen and watch the vote. Marjorie walked down that aisle to cast that vote and Republicans stood there and taunted her and they said, bye bye Marjorie, bye bye Marjorie. The vote was needed and I gave him the 218. So I'm quite sure he knew that that was uh, a, a, a political death knell. And it was. I do not regret my vote, nor do I apologize for it. There was a lot of hostility in that room. Hostility that would send her packing after just one term. Fast forward 20 years, and now her old seat is open with one big difference. The district has been redrawn, and it's solidly Democratic. So she's at it again, locked in a tight primary as an advocate for abortion rights and the middle class. Is this a little bit the politics of redemption to a degree? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I think uh, it would be more resilience. I don't have any retirement skills. She spent the last two decades on women's issues, both outside and inside politics. On the sexual harassment on Capitol Hill, is it there? Well, first of all, I think it has to be addressed. Do you think women have a harder time still running? When I was running in, in, in the 90s, I always got questions as to how, who was taking care of your children. And, and even if the questions aren't asked, they're there. In this campaign, she started as the big name front runner and has been attacked on campaign finances, for coasting early on, and for her use of a valuable asset, the Clintons. He seems like a great guy, but everything he's talking about happened in the past. We always knew that if they came in too much, we would be blamed for their coming in too much. If they didn't come in enough, that people would say they didn't come in enough. You're kind of damned if you do, do and damned if you don't. Uh, they have done everything we've asked them to do, and I am running on what I have accomplished in the last 20 years and, uh, and not on my affiliation with the Clintons. But she's not exactly running away from them, either. And this district will be well served if you elect her. Did she consult with a former president about running? I, I called and he said, um, I think it's a good idea. But that's pretty much it. She's even more guarded if you dare to ask some personal questions about life in the Clinton family. It's just, it's an area that I will not get into. Okay. Um, I, they are lovely. Um, the, the Clintons couldn't be any nicer. Are you going to talk about what it's going to be like to be co-grandmother-in-chief? No. After four decades in the public eye, Margolis knows how to stay on message, even when it's Hillary Clinton's. Is there any doubt in your mind that she's running? She has said that she is making up her mind, and I take her at her word. So... She has said that she's making up her mind, and I take her at her word. She has said... <laughs>